How you doing today, folks? Now, before we get started, we're going to do a $1,000 giveaway for 1,000 subscribers. Definitely stay tuned for that. This is going to be the video review of the Sean O'Connell Knives LBXL, which is this big, beautiful, unfortunately flawed beast. So first off, let's speak about this beautiful blade. We have over four inches of beautiful Nitro V steel, cut out and grinded in such a way to be an absolute flex. Look at all these crazy different lines and different grinds and everything else. It makes for a really interesting aesthetic piece. That attention to detail and overall aesthetic choices does carry over into the knife as a whole. You have these very interesting bronze titanium pivot collars on both sides, which then tapers into a bronze titanium clip, which blends into this beautiful patina and copper backspacer wonderfully contoured actual handles all the cutouts and everything are in very smooth no problems beautiful orange peel texture and an overall look that to me just personally speaks to me now as far as overall ergonomics all of that tension and detail really does pay its dividends because this is a very comfortable knife in hand now this is a big knife i have two xl hands so if you have smaller hands it might not be quite for you but for me personally it fits really really well that's mainly due to all of these crazy lines now, the person who made this knife, they very clearly cared about ergonomics and how it actually felt in hand. And as such, there's zero hot spots with this knife. There's zero problems. Even though this backspacer is raised quite a bit, it also manages to blend seamlessly into your overall hand. And as far as ergonomics go, this knife is in genuine and truly home run. I have zero complaints, which is a pretty uncommon thing. At the end of the day, this is a knife and it's designed to cut. And it cuts very, very nice. There is no resistances at all cutting through paper. And you can expect about the same when going through cardboard. As you can see, very clean cutter. So at the start of the video, I mentioned this knife is flawed. And I'm going to go ahead and get into exactly why I feel that to be the case. Firstly, a nitpick. If you like deep carry clips, this is definitely not the one for you. It sticks out quite a bit, which is normally not too big of a problem for me personally. However, the way this backspacer is molded, this is going to constantly poke you in the side, poke you in your hand. Whenever you might reach around or grab something, this little thing is going to clip on you, which wouldn't be such, such a big deal, but this piece right here is actually pretty damn sharp. Now, this is a custom knife. I'm not going to go ahead and chamfer this or anything like that. This is also not my custom knife. This belongs to my friend Scott. So I'm not going to modify anything, but this little piece here it's just something that should not be as sharp as it is. Like I can actually cut myself. I got to put quite a bit of force onto it to do so, but I can actually cut myself and that's really not okay. Secondly, if you notice this very interesting sharpening choil, even though you have this big choil right here, they also went ahead and made another one. And that is because the blade actually pops out of the handle. Now, even with this choil here, you can still cut yourself. And I have several times actually. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but you do have such a wide space here as you can very easily reach your fingers into it and you can very much touch the edge. Again, he tried to make it a little better by just knocking off this troll piece, but it's just not enough. It needs to be designed a bit better. You need to be a little more careful because this knife can absolutely hurt you. Now, this knife is also one of the worst carries I've ever had. Now, again, I don't so much mind like the not deep carry, but the way this knife is balanced means it sways like a pendulum in your pocket. So every single time you're moving, you're just feeling it do this. It's not a good feeling. Um, again, whenever you have to reach your hand into your pocket to grab something, you're going to rub against this, which is not chamfered properly. Or you're going to rub against this blade and you're going to cut the shit out of yourself. So overall, it's not the best design knife. Again, ergonomics are great. I love the blade. I love the overall aesthetics of it. But there are pieces to this knife that are just bad. And it gets worse. So this knife suffers from what I call the deadlock. Now, as far as lock stick, that's something you can, you can get over, right? You know, it's a pain in the ass. It's tedious, but it's not a super big deal. This knife will go from locking up just fine to doing this. Ugh. Now, as you can see, my camera jumped. I almost cut myself and everything just in general almost falls apart immediately, right? And I'm going to go ahead and let my, my, this film keep on rolling just to really demonstrate. It takes so much force to disengage this knife that if you were not completely stable in every way, shape, or form, this might fly out of your hands, this might cut you, might do any number of things. The amount of force it takes to disengage this lock bar is nothing short but of insanity. Now, 
my buddy Scott told me these knives take a while to break in, right? I've had this knife for about a month so far. I've opened and closed it literally thousands of times on the couch. I've also used it a decent amount and it's not getting better. It's not as bad as it was to be very clear, but it is still bad enough that it is the worst case of locks I've ever seen in my entire life. And there's a video if you want to go through my channel where I'm talking about opening and closing this knife and my thumbs are literally black. Both thumbs because you got to switch hands because eventually it gets to the point where it doesn't even cooperate anymore. Now, on top of that, this knife is heavy. And if you see this weight right now, it is really, really heavy. I don't mind heavier knives. I don't mind bigger knives. But it gets to get to a point to where you're approaching something crazy. And this is kind of approaching and almost beyond that piece to me where it just doesn't serve any purpose. Also, the balance point's not all there so that weight overall makes it feel very strange in hand. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm very much a big knife guy. If you're new to the channel, this is mo most of my collection consists of are big, gigantic, overbuilt, heavy as fuck giant knives. So I don't normally mind stuff like this, man. But the, I'm, I'm serious. Like The balance point on a bigger knife is so important. And for the Sean O'Connell LBXL, it's, it's just not there. So even though it is a bigger knife, it is a heavier knife, it's not one that I personally really enjoy. I started off really liking this knife, and the more I've used it and the more I've carried it, the more I just have a lot of problems with it. Because this knife doesn't really fit the EDC crop. Because of that very strange balance point, it doesn't really fit my working knives. It's also not overall strange enough, in my personal opinion, to fit kind of a collector status. Because in my opinion, it tries to kind of straddle both grounds. It wants to have these hyper grinds and everything else. So basically, it can be a pretty knife, but also a user. But the balance point isn't quite there, so it's not the best user. It also has some fit and finish problems. Most folks wouldn't want this as a safe queen. It really does have this very strange balancing point that I feel like almost perfectly encompasses something like this, which is EDC, utilitarian, basic, and something like this, which is just a flex piece. But it hits a middle ground to where it's not either of these, and at the same time, it's nothing. So I really can't figure out who to recommend this knife to. It's not bad fundamentally, but it's just, it's different enough that it doesn't quite fit my personal aesthetic choices. But at the same time, it's also unique and interesting enough to where I kind of like it, but then it also has profound problems that I can't get over. I'm also going to speak about the elephant in the room here, and that is this is so very clearly a Borka-inspired design without actually having that quality. But at the same time, this is still over $1,000, so this is not by any means some production Borka. This is still a, a full-on custom without a lot of the fit and finish and the time and attention to detail that that has. So again, this knife to me is just so very strange and I almost don't want to give it a score. But as a knife reviewer, I have to. So with all that being said, before I give this my actual score, I really hope Sean O'Connell watches this video. I um, probably won't, but if he does, that'd be awesome. Um, I really recommend you take this kind of back to the drawing board, brother. Like, you have a lot of really good ideas here. Um, the execution isn't just wrong on a, on a fundamental level, though. There are pieces that don't morph together, that serve as a fantastic piece by themselves, but all together don't really fit. I also cannot stress enough the balance point, especially with the bigger knife, is so very important. And this just doesn't quite have it. So with all that being said, my review of the uh, Sean O'Connell Knives LBXL is going to be a 7 out of 10. Um, it's a knife that I really, really liked at first, but the more I used and carried it, the more problems kept on popping up, not to mention the absolutely horrible lock stick. But just as a fundamental piece, I find this knife to be sort of lackluster. Very interesting. I'm very glad I got to handle it. You know, big shout out to uh, Scott and Big Board Knife and Gear for letting me check it out. But um, for me personally, it's just not my thing. Now, with all that being said, folks, it's time for my favorite part of the video. I love you all. Thank you for your likes, support, subscribes, or comments. They mean the absolute world to me. 
I love you all, every single one of you. You guys make my absolute day, my week, my morning, my noon, my night, everything fantastic. I appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart. Now, as always, folks, please do me just one personal favor and be a better person tomorrow than you are today. And I do promise you to find your center in life. I love you all. Have a great day, morning, noon, or night, no matter what you are doing. Have a fantastic one. Be blessed. Take care. Be safe. And bye.